I, I guess I didn't go through the sort of uh, the same transformation that, that in the way that Maggie did. But basically, um, I mean, I supported her and the things that she was saying that she was going to do were all evidence based, you know, backed by research papers. Um, they were in books. So it wasn't, you know, like that she was going off on, you know, some some crazy tangent. Um, so that allowed me to just sort of, you know, like wholeheartedly just join her in what she was doing. So I basically just ended up on a ketogenic diet out of support for my spouse. Um, and then I'm, and I'm really glad I did. I mean, it's worked out fantastic um, just for me personally. Um, um, but uh, I don't know if that really answers your question too much about how much I, I grew, but uh it's just been really great, like, you know, being introduced to this other world. We, we talk about this all the time where, where you feel like we've been pulled out of the matrix, right? Where you're just like, wait a minute, how? And that's when, when Maggie says that she, you know, I disagree with her about having this happened. My disagreement isn't that we've ended up in a good place, but my disagreement is that why, why did I for so long, for almost 50 years, like, was I taught this by society that, you know, that all these things are, are fine and you shouldn't worry about it. Like you could literally, literally even go to your doctor when you have a cancer diagnosis and they're like, eat Snickers bars, it's fine. Right. Like just that, that was the part that was troubling to me is just like, well, you know, how come we wouldn't have ended up where we are if there had been sort of a, a more uh, intelligent, preventative way of, you know, of, of getting this information out there. Yeah. yeah. We've, we've learned so much from this. Like, e I really began my learning five years ago with my diagnosis. I was no evidence of disease. One year later, I continued my lifestyle, enhanced it, continued to educate myself. But the things that I'm learning, not just about diet and lifestyle and all of that, but the way that our society processes and accepts information is insane to me now. Like even just in the last year, realizing that all the assumptions of my, my, my life for the last 40 three years that the government's out here to protect me, that, you know, science is going to just reveal the truth. I, I'm starting to realize that things just don't work the way that I thought that they do. And it's shocking. Pretty common that people learn this lesson and their first reaction is to just get angry. Like they're just mad that they had assumed all of those things that you mentioned, like the government is out to exactly like that we're supposed to be protected and they're going to help us and they're giving us the right recommendations. And, you know, it's interesting when somebody says, if somebody were to tell me like, oh, I, I got a diagnosis of cancer. So I went to the internet to study this stuff. Uh, who knows where you are going to end up? You might end up on some website that is shipping people to the Amazon forest to lick frogs or something like you never really know like what yeah. the good information is. So how do you know you were going the right path? Like how did you know the research that you were finding was actually um, you know evidence based? For me, it was PubMed, and I was extremely analytical. <laughs> all into allopathic only medicine. I was not the woo-woo hippie that I've since become. <laughs> and so if it wasn't in a study that had been peer reviewed, I wasn't going to believe it. And that's great for me that my internet filters just show me PubMed and really good research. But I know a lot of people are going to have a lot of people recommend to me the things that they found on YouTube or Facebook or a less reliable source. And that's where we realize that somebody who has a terminal cancer diagnosis in any diagnosis isn't necessarily like me where they're gonna to want to wade through tons of journals and research. And that is where Brad had the incredible idea to at the time create a documentary, now a docu-series where we could present this to people in a much easier way, still incredibly evidence-based, cited by, you know, it's not us in, this uh these episodes it's the actual doctors who and scientists who did this research and just being able to sit back and watch it in a visual form i think it's going to help a lot more people understand it and see it and not have to resort to their you know aunt's roommate's facebook feed yeah yeah, I, yeah this isn't a docu series that follows maggie's journey from you know like through cancer wards um you know that seems to be kind of what most cancer documentaries are. And we, when we first started coming up with the idea, we were like, is, we just decided that that's just so depressing. Even if there is a good outcome at the end, it's like, if you're trying to, if you're a cancer patient or a cancer caregiver, to be sort of dragged through that is just, it's not what you want to do. It's not helpful. Everyone knows cancer sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, so it's like, yeah, is that like, a, like sort of a, 
a shortcut to human emotions. Yes, it is. And, you know, from a storyteller perspective, you know, if we're just trying to reach someone on the street that has no connection to this disease, that might be a, a route we would take. But we were actually trying to, we're trying to help cancer patients and cancer caregivers. So we decided that just, you know, using Maggie's story as kind of like a launching point and, uh, and then telling you, you know, the research that, you know, Dr. Thomas Seyfried and others like him, uh, you know, Adrian Scheck, um, these, um, these amazing scientists and researchers uh, are finding. And, you know, it's just hard to find this information. It is. It is. And you guys are doing a great job getting the word out. And you, you, the parts that I've seen of everything that you've done so far have been absolutely wonderful, really well told. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But before we do, I think it would be nice to kind of review what the conventional kind of message around cancer and cancer treatment is and contrast that to what what we know when we have known for a very long time about cancer as a metabolic disease. Yes. So when I was first diagnosed, again, I was full-fledged allopathic medicine only wanted to do what my doctor said because I knew they had the best science. It was obviously with my condition, I was inoperable, terminal, incurable, but they did offer me palliative treatments in uh, the brain radiation that has left me brain damaged and uh, the chemotherapy. And so went with these, it seemed like the right thing. But what Brad and I realized over time was that my oncologist very much seemed to just be following a flow chart. Uh, he even forgot what kind of cancer I had at one time. He confused my Bras one with an ALK mutation. Uh, and he just wasn't invested. And I realized, okay, he thinks I'm gonna die in the year. Maybe he doesn't wanna get invested, but it became very frustrating. And then even when I started doing my own research in these published journals, I you know, approached one of my oncologists about the ketogenic diet. And he was like, oh, that's the low fat one, right? Yeah, it should be fine. <laughs> and so that tells you how much they know about nutrition nice. and things like that. Um, but overall, just not supportive at all. I stopped telling my doctors in Hong Kong what I was doing. These days in Seattle, my <laughs> doctors also aren't supportive, but I have this full disclosure. I'll tell them what I'm doing. They tell me, no, don't do it. And then we, I say, well, I'm going to. Yeah. <laughs> and they haven't said they're not going to treat me. So... Uh, we had that yeah. going for us, yeah. but yes. So standard treatments, following the flow chart, pretty much all you get is surgery, chemo, radiation. Maybe if you're lucky, you can do some uh, immunotherapy. immunotherapy, CAR T, something like that. But guys, there's no question we have solved the cancer problem. It's you know, increasing numbers of deaths every year. We're over six hundred thousand cancer deaths a year in just the United States. So wow. it, that's why it shocks me so much that, you know, some doctors aren't even willing to look at other integrative supportive therapies. And I want to preface this with saying, there's no question that doctors go into medicine, medicine to help people. Like nobody's going in there yeah. to screw you up, but there's just this, you know, the system that they go into that in a lot of ways yeah. ties their hands. Well, especially cancer doctors, once you have a diagnosis, they have a very, it, it really is a flow chart. I mean, they really can't vary too much in how they treat you. They really have to, you know, follow these, um, you know, paths that are given to them by the system, which they work in, which are, you know, basically the same. Um, if you're lucky enough to find a, an oncologist that understands the, the metabolics, metabolics, excuse me, of, uh, of cancer, then they're very lucky. Um, but what a lot of people do is they sort of keep their traditional oncologist and then they get a metabolic oncologist on the side. So um, Maggie uses a, a, an oncologist. I'll just give him a quick plug. Charles Meekin, Meekin Metabolics. He's a, a great guy, but- uh, Great integrative yeah. oncologist. And he understands the me metabolism of cancer. And so he can work with you to help lower your blood sugar, which I guess I could get into the, the, meta the metabolic side of cancer. Can and and the tr metabolic treatments yeah. th that can be used on their own, but seem to be most- efficient yeah. in conjunction yeah. with commission. I would, I would love to go there with this conversation for sure. I just want to comment real quick. To me, what surprises me is the lack of curiosity. Like, I think it's one thing if the doctor is like, he's been indoctrinated, um, pun intended, with, you know, low fat diet. These are the recommendations. This is what we're telling people. It's lack of curiosity. Like, why is Maggie still in my calendar? I thought she was going to die after six months, why do she, why is this year three? Why is this year four? Why wouldn't you want to know? Like, why wouldn't you ask, ask questions? Like it, that's the part that's like, it's so confusing to me. 
So yeah. my, my primary med, uh, oncologist here in Seattle, I, I'm obviously one of his longest lived patients and I always tell him what I'm doing and like how this helps me. And he, his response is it's against my beliefs, but he, I'm one of two of his patients. I don't know many details about the other one who he just calls my miracle clients. And he doesn't want to know really what I'm doing, just what I force him to understand. Mm -hmm. He's not inquisitive at all. Yeah, and we feel crazy. like it's really interesting where it's like, I mean, if, if you would, if someone, if you didn't have a screwdriver and someone handed you a screwdriver and all of a sudden you could, you know, work much more efficiently, much better, do your job better. It's like, I would, I would want to know about, you know, I would want to use that tool. And it's like, that just seems so counterintuitive to Maggie and I, where it's like, you know, we feel like we're doing something different and we're being open and honest with our oncol her oncologist about this. And, but yeah, there's no, and, and she's not the only one. There are a lot of people that we have spoken with who have used metabolic therapies that say the exact same thing. Like, I, you know, I've tried to tell my oncologist that I'm doing a ketogenic diet. It's benefiting me. And I'm talking about like dozens of people. Um, and they get this sort of pushback or indifference from their, their doctor. Like, well, you're just special or you're a, you're a miracle or something like that. Yeah. It's like, and I'm not, uh, I'm not special. Got, I'm not a miracle. Uh, I just feel like if that's true, we got a lot of miracles out there. We've got a lot of miracles. 